So, good morning, St. John's. And I was greeting all the people who will be watching us live on Zoom this morning service, and also those who will be watching the service later on YouTube. And I was just remarking about how it's quite cozy in the church because there are very few people here. So it really is lovely to see you all. Today is the first Sunday of Christmas. Yesterday, Christmas Day, the 25th of December, and today, the first Sunday of Christmas. And today is St. Stephen's Day. Many of you will know about St. Stephen's in the song, um, Good King Wenceslas went out on the Feast of Stephen. So the Feast of Stephen is Boxing Day, the day after Christmas, the first day of Christmas. And when I was thinking about today's service, it occurred to me that many of us think, oh, Christmas is over and done with. But really, for the next 12 days, we can celebrate the fact that Jesus is come. So, everyone, you're very welcome to today's service. So, turning to our order service sheet, we are going to say our opening prayers together. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Jesus is our way. With Jesus, even the dark places are light. Jesus is the truth. In Jesus, we shall live forever. Jesus is our life. So we are going to sing our opening hymn and it's a reminder that a boy is born and that boy is Jesus Christ. So please stand if you're able.
Sit. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 to 7, it says, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. And if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie. And do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Let's just keep a moment of silence as we consider the past week. And we are able to bring right here, right now, to God in his house. We're able to bring things that we're sorry for. Things we've said. Or perhaps things we have not said. Things we've done and things that we ought not to have done. So let's just bring them to mind now and... Remember that our loving God forgives us if we confess our sins. Let us pray together. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who were once dead but now have life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us all in goodness and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we pray together the special collect for today, the first Sunday of Christmas. God in Trinity, eternal unity of perfect love, gather the nations to be one family and draw us into your holy life through the birth of Emmanuel, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we're going to have... Please look up. And we're going to have now a short time of um, praise worship, just thanking God for our lives, our family, and being able to be here today. So we're going to sing one after the other, led by Christian, hymns 124 and 1377. Please stand if you're able. Sing, give thanks. Can you hear me? Hallelujah. With a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given to us His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. To the Holy One, give thanks, because He's given Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, he saw down. And now, let the weak sit by a throne. Let the poor sit I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now, and now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. We'll take it from more time. Give thanks. Hallelujah. Mm. Give thanks with, with a grateful heart. heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given. Jesus Christ, He is Son. Give thanks. Give thanks. To the grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One. Who give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, He is Son. And now, and now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now, and now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Yes, we give thanks for what the Lord hath done. And let the weak say, I am strong. And the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And we'll sing, Jesus be the center. Hallelujah. Be the center, be the source, be my light, Jesus. Jesus, be the center, be my hope. Be my son, Jesus. Be the fire. Be the fire in my heart. Be the winds in this sense. Be the reason that I live, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, be my vision, be my path, be my guide, Jesus, be the fire, hallelujah, be the fire in my heart, be the wing in the cells, be the reason that I live, Jesus, Jesus. We'll take it from the top one more time. Jesus, be the center, be my soul, be my light, Jesus. Jesus, be the center, be my hope, be my song, 
Jesus. Be the fire, be the fire in my heart. Be the wind in this cell. Be the reason that I live, Jesus. Jesus. So, Father, that's our heart's desire this morning. And that's our heart prayer, Lord, that you be the fire in our hearts, that you be the wind in our sails. Even as I come to the end of this year and the next year draws closer, we we'll ask, O oh Lord, as we embark on this journey, that you continue to be the light that shine on our parts, that we might see your footsteps and plant ours therein. For in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 And then please sit for our readings. And Millie is going to come to do the scripture readings. first reading is taken from Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 17. So that's Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly beloved, close yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace, and be thankful let the message of Christ dwell among you rich, richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs for the Spirit from singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, verse 41 to 52. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went to the festival according to the custom. After the custom was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and questioning them, sorry, asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Where were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand. And he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks to you, O oh God. Let 
us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for your word that's come forth to bless us this morning. May the entrance of your word bring forth light and life in our spirit to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, Sister Shalom mentioned that um, we have a fewer number of us in the service today, so it felt a bit cozy. And cozy. Um, but it also reminded me um, of the message we had yesterday, which was um, sort of titled A Talk. And part of that, we've got series of services for the Christmas period. I think this is mine. Is it mine making a noise? Yes. Is it mine? Right, okay. Um, okay, let me change that and let's see. Is that any better? Much better. Okay, thank you. Right, so yes, um, it, it reminded me of sort of the talk we uh, Reverend Abigail brought for us yesterday about our response, or what our response was to the gift of a son, to the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ, and how those responses could be in terms of how we offer gifts to one another or offer thanks and praise for what God has done for us. And the message today in a way picks up from that but in a slightly different dimension. But when I was thinking about the service and the nature of talks, it also reminded me of my experience when I was doing placement at St. Andrews. Um, because of COVID and because St. Andrews was quite a high Anglican church. Services there, sermons there were normally quite short. It was about five minutes. I think uh, Reverend Bigger popped in the day I preached at St. Andrews and it was so short. I was told it has to be four or five minutes. And I was like, how am I going to compress this into four or five minutes? But sometimes it's not the volume that counts. It's really the quality that counts. And um, perhaps in the same way, we approached the sermon or the talk as well this morning, given that we had a similar talk as well yesterday. So I will not give us a full uh, excerpt. But the message is, is quite clear from what uh, we've read about today, especially in the uh, letter of St. Paul's to the Colossians. In terms of the conduct, he was saying to them when he wrote that letter to the Colossians, the Colossians obviously were a church in Colossae and obviously had issues which Paul was trying to respond to them about. Richard, if you can put that first reading, um, no, the, the very first one, sorry, the first reading, Colossians, if you can just project it for us for a minute. Yeah, and it's, Paul started to really have a full understanding of what Paul was trying to say there. You have to read it from the beginning. But our um, today's reading started from verse 12. It's saying, therefore, as God's chosen people, some translation says, as God's elected people, um, holy and dearly beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. So, he is writing to the church of God. He is writing to God's own people. He is admonishing the Christians within the church in Colossia. And he is saying, because you have been elected as God's own people, because you said you are Christians, because you have come on this journey with us, clothe yourself almost like put on. If you read before, in the beginning of that uh, reading, 
He said, since you have taken away the old clothing of sin, what you used to be in the past, clothe yourself now with a new garment. And that part of that clothing of this new garment assumes that in, a, in addition to putting on that garment, you put on these following characteristics. He says, bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you have grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. And thinking about that message as well, in the context of Christmas and in context of the gift that we have of the Son of God given unto us, from yesterday, how do we respond to that? How do we respond to that? Do we just walk on by when we see that person that needed clothing and do not clothe the person? Is that the appropriate response? Because part of Christianity really, actually the essence of our religion is the transformation that comes from professing the love of Christ. So if the assumption is you believe and therefore you are, this is who you are, we have been transformed. And Paul was responding to that when he was saying to the church in Colossians, this is what should be found within yourself now. A few key words that Paul teased out there, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with each other or forgiving one another, even as the Lord forgave us. These are ethics, probably what some people will call ethics in today's world, a living out of what is inside you. Because you have Christ inside you, this is the way you manifest it. And this is the way when you go out on the street, people will recognize you as the elect of Christ. And he says, and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of Jesus. At some point, I don't know, some of us would have noticed when we say sometimes, I think the word is called dissonance. Dissonance, when what the effect or action doesn't quite match what is somebody else is saying, or maybe say mixed messages. What is he saying? He's saying basically that our messaging, our conduct needed to align with the message we're giving out to people. That's the way we show our Christianity and the gift that the Lord has given unto us. There is a letter to the Revelations. Um, Richard, if you can put that letter. Revelations, I was reflecting on these when I remembered, again, one of the seven letters written in Revelations to the churches. This one was to the church in Laodicea. And the writer says, to the angel of the church in Laodicea, write, these are the words of the Amen the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one of or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out, out of my mouth. You say, I am rich, I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you can become rich and white clothes to wear so that you can cover your shameful nakedness and serve to put on your eyes so that you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. 
So be earnest and repent. To some extent, you can see the letter that the similarities between what the angel was asking in the vision there to write to the church of Laodicea was similar to what Peter or Paul was trying to say to the Colossians. You've got to make a stand. There are historical contexts about what happened in that Laodicea. Just a little bit of it. Laodicea is in the middle between Hierapolis in the history and Colossae. And apparently during the Roman Empire, Hierapolis had hot springs. Water from Hierapolis is very warm. It's very hot because they come straight from the heat of the mountain. So it's used for healing and comes down to um, Laodicea. But to the south of Laodicea is Colossae or Colossians where Paul was writing to today. And they've got cold springs from there that is really good and refreshing to drink. So the water from Colosse comes to Laodicea again and it's cold. But because Laodicea is right in the middle, in the middle between the two cities, by the time the hot water comes from Helapolis down to Laodicea, it's lost a lot of its heat. So it becomes lukewarm. And by the time the water, the cold water travels from Colosse down to Laodicea, it's lost some part of its coldness. So it's become, so Christ was trying to give them a context there that I would rather you be cold, which means you are refreshing. I can drink cold water and it's refreshing my thirst when I need cold water. Or maybe perhaps in the winter when you need warmth or hot water, there is steam bath. So hot water or cold water are all good in their current states. However, when they lose their states, if you become neither, it's not entirely good. But digging deep into our context, simple what we're talking about today, it's about really the calling that Christ is making out for us. We're saying we believe the gospel that Christ has given us. So he's asking us, so if, like when we started from the beginning, now reading there, if you will say we are the elect of Christ, since we say we believe, this is how we should behave. Since we say we are the elect of Christ, clothe yourself with these attitudes, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness. So in a way, it's about being true to what you profess. And perhaps as we journey through 2021 and it's coming to an end and we're about to take stock and we're thinking, how have I come in my journey? What has been the trajectory in my journey? Have we been true to ourselves in the things we profess? Are there areas where we've lost either our coldness or lost the heat that we need to adjust because the cold water, as we saw from that reading, can also provide refreshing, and we need it for different circumstances. But when we need the heat of healing, the hot water, the hot spring is what it is. But we need to make up our mind which one we are. And as elect members and body of Christ, we are asked to manifest these attitudes. So just trying to recap them. From the talk of yesterday, we realize that we respond to the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ by recognizing the needs around us, by giving thanks, as Reverend Abigail uh, reminded us, by giving thanks to the people around us. But today as well, we respond to that body of Christ by wearing as uh, Apostle Paul says there, clothing ourselves with compassion and being a Christian in conduct, not just the way we profess it. But we recognize to a large extent we cannot do any of this by our own powers and we need the power of the risen Christ to help us 
to the, by the, by, we need the Spirit as well to help us each and every way to be true to our calling. So as we gradually come towards the end of the year and we begin to take stock, we need to reflect in our lives what we profess in our hearts and let our conduct and our actions bear witness for the gift of the Son and for the Spirit that has been planted within us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word that has come to bless us. Father, you've called us to humility, to sense of patience. You've called us to love one another. You've called us to forgive as you have forgiven us. On our own, O oh Lord, we recognize that we are not able to accomplish some of this. But by the help of your spirit, you will enable us, O oh Lord, to do that which is desirable and to live out your faith in our lives that the world can see. That we can respond to the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in doing so, transform our lives and our immediate communities and people around us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Christian, for that thought-provoking um, sermon and for the reminder about how we should be Christian in our daily lives. So please turn to your order of service sheets and we're going to affirm our faith together. Please stand if you're able. And we say together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit or kneel as Auntie Elsie brings us our intercessory prayers. Let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you for your words this morning. May you continue to use your son for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Father and our Lord, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Light in the Darkness, Emmanuel, God is with us. We give you praise and honor for giving us the grace to celebrate another Christmas and to see the last day, the last Sunday in December, year 2, 2021. Father, we thank you for all you have done for us in the past and the one that you are here to do. 
Lord, in your mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. God of peace, when we are anxious and frightened about many things, help us to turn to you and receive your gift of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Your word says, there's not a righteous man on earth who does what is right and never sin. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us our sins, that you do not look into our wrongdoing. When they asked Jesus, how many times did they have to forgive? Jesus answers, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. May we learn how to forgive one another as our Savior has forgiven us and follow his words. Lord, in your mercy, for those in public office, Christ, you are the wisdom from high. Grant new wisdom to our leaders for Boris Johnson and all in the authority that they may do the right things, that our nations may prosper and that we may be safe. Lord, in your mercy. At this Christmas, let us remember those near and far all over our world who will not share or feel any sense of joy, of rejoicing, of the presence of God. For so many reasons, those who have been bereaved and continue to mourn the loss of loved ones. Those who lives, whose lives are full of sorrow, fear, darkness, poverty, and hunger. May your light radiate to them, Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, Lord, for all who are keeping our church, St. John's with Holy Trinity, going since we have no vicar. We pray for the church wardens, Busola, Daniel, Reverend Pat, Reverend Abigail, Georgia, Shola, Christy, Bath, and all different groups, and everyone that render their help in different ways. May the peace of God, which is beyond understanding, guide their hearts and minds in Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Our hope is in you, Lord. We are trusting in you, Father, concerning this deadly virus killing people all over the world. We pray for those who are in the front line that we continue to give them, to guide them and give them what they need as they face challenges every day. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all our members that are unable to join us this morning, wherever they might be, Father, shower your blessings upon them. Father, as we go out, Lord, we surrender our lives into your hand. Protect us, grant us peace, joy, and good health. Hear us as we call upon you this morning. All this we ask in your name. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
And as our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please look up. A wise person once said, it is not until we are tested that we have a testimony. But we can be thankful to God always because our God is a gracious God and a merciful God. So now, although we're few in number here in church, if there are anybody here who would like to give a testimony or a thanksgiving few words to God, please come forward. Please come forward. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise, praise, praise our living God. Hallelujah. Our God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Yes. I'm just thanking God for his blessings over me, over my family. God has been so good to me. I can't thank him enough. If I count my blessings, it's more than the sons of the sea. I just want to give him all the glory for his protection throughout the year 2021. It has been a tough time, but God, he is at my side. As he has promised that he would never leave me, nor forsake me. And I can see his hands upon me all the day, all the time. I just thank God and I give him all the glory. And I thank every member of St. John, especially our prayer group, intercession group. I pray that God will continue to strengthen all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Is there anybody else? All right, so may we please stand if you're able, and we're just going to share with one another the peace. To us, a child is born, to us, a son is given and his name shall be called Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share peace to one another. Peace be with you. And the offertory hymn this morning is number 289, Jesus is King. Father, exalt. 
did for us. We have a hope that is tough and certain. Go through the curtain and touch in the throne. We have a priest who interceding, pouring his grace on our lives day to day. We can come to him, our priests and apostles, clothed in his glory and bearing his name, laying our lives with gladness before him. Filled with his spirit, we worship the King. O Holy One, our hearts do adore you. Thread with your goodness, we give you our praise. Angels with one. She worships around him, Jesus our Savior, Revenge. We'll take it from the top again, Richard. If we can do it from the beginning again. Hallelujah. Jesus is king and I will extol him. Jesus is king. And I will extol him, give him the glory, and honor his name. He reigns on high, and thrown in the heaven, word of the Father, exalted for us. Amen. Please sit and I'll invite um, Daniel if we have any notices. <laughs> Good morning, St. John's. Another question, do we really have a notice? The only notice we can talk about is the watch night service on Friday night. Um, some people want to come and pray earlier. So the, um, we are supposed to open the church by half 10. Do you want me to come and open at 10 o'clock for you? 10. Uh, 10 o'clock. 10, so um, I'll come and open the church at 10 p.m. for those who want to come and pray before the service at um, 11 or half 11. So and that is the main one. And then two, uh, oh, the, the service is, uh, is from 10.30. So uh, I can mean, I just add? Yeah. That it just appears a little bit confusing. So I'd like to invite either Christian or Reverend Abigail. Abigail to tell us exactly because I've had con confusing yeah. uh, notices. So please, could you tell us? So if people online, will, people who have joined us online, they will hear it this morning. So everybody will be clear when the service is. Thank you. As he said, on the notice on our service, the night, watch night, will start at half past ten with prayer and testimonies. But if you want to come and pray earlier, the church will be open at ten. And it will be from ten to twelve. Let us enter the new year right. 
And that is faith, Christ. Thank you, Thank you. for that clarification. Thank you. So those who are watching and those who are listening, uh, it's from 10 p.m. And then um, Bishop Christopher sent a um, Christmas message. It is on the uh, on this sheet. Please take it with you. Read and pray about it. And also, can I say this? Can we give a big clap to all the ministry team? Shala, well done. And my brother, Pastor Christian, and Abigail, and all the team. Please, let's give them a big clap. <laughs> You know, we've been without a vicar for the whole year. But it seems that we have a vicar. We have vicars in different areas. You all here heard the service by Pastor Chris this morning. Wasn't it excellent? Excellent. <laughs> excellent. 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 And Reverend Abigail yesterday as well. So let's go to the year with with the vigor and the hope and the belief that um, God is with us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. You know, um, Daniel, he's a very modest man. And I know those of you who are watching on Zoom and those who will watch this later, and those of you who are here now, He's very modest. Himself and Pusola have worked extremely hard this past year. And as Daniel has said, so as members of the ministry team, Christian, Reverend Abigail, Georgia, and myself, <laughs> we have worked extremely hard this past year. And so please continue to pray that we will get a vicar soon you know, so that a vicar can come and be part of our church because all of us have continued to be church during this vacancy. And when we start mentioning names, we're liable to forget somebody. But I can see Shirley and Sandra sitting there and they look after our young children, you know. Not everybody is here who takes part in our church life, but all of us take part in our church life. By being here this morning, we are fellowshipping with one another. So we thank God for that. I would just like to add one more notice and it's to do with COVID. Many of our services have started with the person leading the worship, reminding us about the importance of wearing our face masks. Please wear your face mask and cover your nose also. Please wear your face mask and cover your nose also. At the end of the service, do not stay inside the church. Please go out, outside to continue talking to one another. We know that the Omicron strain is not as deadly as the previous Delta and the previous strain to that. However, people still are falling ill and those who unfortunately are not vaccinated are still falling ill. There are still deaths occurring because of COVID. Before retirement, I was a scientist, a research scientist at the Francis Crick Institute. And in this church, we also have doctors current doctors, retired doctors, who will tell you that it is important for us to be safe and also be um, mindful about those around us, keeping them safe as well. So please continue to follow the guidelines, which are at the back of your order of notice sheet. Thank you very much. So we're going to continue our service and I'm going to ask, are there any birthdays? So yesterday, we asked if there were any birthdays. There weren't any. But I noticed today we have people who were not here yesterday. So do we have any birthdays today or the coming week? No? So we'll continue our service 
by singing our closing hymn, which testifies to God's faithfulness. And it's number 147, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Please stand. Jesus, Lord of time, hold us in your eternity. Jesus, image of God, travel with us life of faith. Jesus, friend of sinners, heal the brokenness of our world. Jesus, Lord of tomorrow, draw us into your future. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be amongst us.
and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. So let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Christian. Thank you.